Welcome everyone to this exciting game from the Join Dota League. Pander here, and this should be a good one between Cleve and my insanity. As my insanity had picked up one whopper of a team fight composition already, taking Doom, Tidehunter, and Enigma. Meaning they're gonna be wanting to team fight the entire game long, and I love that style coming out. As the latest patch has given us a great deal of team fight comps coming out, and it's been really impressive. Cleave aren't going to be outdone though, as they pick up Faceless Void, Invoker, and Treant as their first three, meaning a lot of team fight from them as well. Treant Protector with a nice overgrowth, and Living Armor being some of the most annoying spells in the game. Invoker with his full reel inside a Chronosphere spells doom for pretty much anyone this game, and it should be really exciting to see how they actually go about dealing with it, as Faceless Void, insanely powerful. Though a lot of the Faceless Voids you've seen of, as of late have gone to that off lane and played a lot more of the utility controller. Where they kind of ro pick up the Aghanim Scepter, they pick up one or two other small items and don't go to that hard carry. But Cleave pick up another big ultimate. Same thing with my Insanities, we have the Lion versus Skywrath Mage. Both doing insane amounts of damage on their ultimates and having great kits for ganking. I fully expect to see both of these teams playing kill playing a kill game all the time just going for kills and ganks as neither one of these teams need to stop at any point skyrath mage doesn't need a whole lot of mana early on unless he actually has to use his ultimate the rest of the team they generally don't need a ton of mana same thing with my insanity they need a fair bit but they can continually start ganks and i expect to see a lot of gold going to everyone this game just so we can see some early arcane boots and see some constant fighting. My insanity still need a true carry as I expect to see the doom place in the mid lane, tide hunter off lane, enigma jungle, lion support, and getting a plus one something fairly team fight heavy. Murana would not be terrible as that give him a decent setup. It also give a pretty good escape, not a hard carry, but would do a decent job in this position. And Five something like that would be a real good. Temple Assassin would not be terrible if they want to put Doom safe lane. But they're going to go Death Prophet, giving them a good amount of team fight. And a lot of early pushing. I like this choice for my insanity. They really have a team that can push and dominate this mid game. And even if they get behind, you're never really out of it when you have a Tidehunter, Enigma, Doom, Lion, and Death Prophet. That lineup, even if you're fairly far behind one good combo and you can be back in this game and you could possibly push down two or three towers if you get a good fight remaining. with death prophet staying alive cleave this Five game they really need to pick up a solid off lane or assuming the faceless void isn't going that direction Reserve and with this time. team fight comp i wouldn't expect him to be in the off lane they really need a b slightly better initiator invoker's decent initiating but he's a lot more about pickoffs or kind of controlling the fights. Treant doesn't come online fast enough, nor does Skywrath Mage. Faceless Void, you really want to have him counter initiate or kind of come in right behind the initiator and set up a good chrono. Something like a Clockwork would not be terrible this game, though we haven't seen a lot of him. He would be pretty good. He's fairly escapable, pretty survivable, and I don't see a whole lot of ways to counter him outside of just blowing them into bits with the entire teamfight comp. Marana's still on the field, which I'm surprised hasn't been banned out. She'd make a good offlaner here, gives them some initiation, some extra damage, and a big teamfight ultimate that'd be very useful against my insanity. But we'll see who they decide to pick up. And I've, I'm still placing my money on Marana this game. Pretty much every game I've seen in the last while has had her in some role or fashion. Just due to the fact she brings a little bit of everything and it's hard to say no to a Marana pickup. Right now, they're just waiting on Cleave to find their last one. They already have an insane amount of team fight. Though I don't foresee them team fighting a whole lot. I see a lot more of the split push game coming from them. As there's not a whole lot of ways to just jump in and initiate early on. Doom and Lion will likely pick up blinks. Enigma might. Tidehunter will eventually. But none of those are Ten great at stopping the Faceless Void outside of Blink Doom. Lion would be okay, but Five that's still fairly remaining. risky unless you have significant follow-up. As I don't see Faceless Void going down. And it's going to be Nature's Prophet. 
not exactly what I was thinking of, but that gives them the split push like I was talking about just a moment ago. That would give them a great deal of split push. They could have Faceless Void and Nature's Prophet kind of splitting the map with Invoker basically sitting behind one waiting to counter initiate. It would not be a terrible lineup to have that going, but we'll have to see how Cleave plays it. Cleave is definitely down based on the draft, just due to the fact my insanity has such a good team fight lineup. I know I've said that a million times, but if you have a team fight this li team fight lineup this good, it's hard not to talk about it at least a few times. And we're gonna see how my insanity decide to actually play this. I really think they're gonna have to go defensive. The question is, are they gonna be putting Doombringer remaining. as a farmer, or, or are they gonna be trying to get a bit more on Tidehunter? I really would be worried about Tidehunter in the off lane just due to the fact they have some pretty good tools to deal with him and I don't foresee him getting a ton of actual farm and I think they want to get the blink dagger extra quick so if they want to do something like stack the ancients for him so he could run in and do that once he picks up a few levels I think they'd be okay with that on the side of my insanity and the other question is are we going to be seeing a doombringer versus invoker mid or death prophet versus invoker I think we're going to be putting the death prophet mid just due to the fact she does fairly well against the Invoker. She keeps the lane pushed out so Invoker can't gank. And has a moderately difficult time going for rune control. This would also buy a lot of space for the Enigma. But it also means that Death Prophet would be under a lot of pressure. To constantly keep that wave pushed and not get ganked. Between the slows of Skywrath and Treant Protector. They have the ability to take Death Prophet out pretty effectively early on. Just land a long rank concussive shot from the Skywrath Mage into the Leech Seed and a Silence and they could do some amazing damage especially with Invoker's Cold Snap once he picks that up so I'd have to be very worried about the Death Prophet mid it's just a question of will they be able to get her farmed especially in this early game looks like we're just waiting for the Tree Protector to fully connect it happens from time to time no big deal and we should be underway in just a few moments this is my insanity versus cleave as part of the join dota league we should be going in just a few moments and we'll actually see how these lanes progress up I, I don't see either team wanting to put up an aggressive tri lane none of these aggressive tri lanes are that strong With me. but they're sending faces void down bottom right off the bat and it's going to be Skywrath and Triumph Protector likely down there as well. Wanting to put some pressure on the Enigma. It's not a bad decision to force Enigma out of the jungle and to actually show himself every now and then. Unless they're just going to go for a full five-man look around. Wouldn't surprise me if that's the case. Place a nice deep ward or two. Try for a first blood attempt. And at the moment it might be a little bit of dual lane action line coming up top just to secure tight onto a bit of farm. And I believe me, uh, me, my insanity is doing exactly what I would have expected. They're going to be putting the Doombringer down bottom. And they're falling kind of into the trap of Cleave if they want to run an aggressive tri lane. Doombringer is going to be shut out. You're going to be getting some farm on Tidehunter, but I don't think you're getting a ton. He does fairly well against Nature's Prophet. And no one's going to be spotted out. So Nigga's going to have a hard time jungling if he chooses to actually jungle on the Radiant side. I would really be surprised if at this point they decide to jungle Radiant's side and just send him up in the aggressive tri lane. They already have a ward that will spot the little treant running around. And no one's going to be spotted. Doombringer doesn't spot out this aggressive tri lane. Lion will, and this is likely first blood. Not a whole lot he can do. Gets a nice impale that might save him for a few moments. But with all the slows, easy first blood. And Cleve doing exactly what they need to do with that aggressive tri lane. And that sets them up for a beautiful mid game. Invisibility rune already. It's going to be likely picked up by the Treant just so he can get in there once he has his Leech Seed. That concussive shot into Leech Seed and the slow from Faceless Void. Going to make Doom really ineffective in this bottom lane. And this is a great choice to run the aggressive tri lane. Wasn't sure how well it was going to work out. But so far, Enigma going to the other side of the map means that Doombringer's in for a world of hurt. And this should be another fairly easy kill. Doombringer not level 2. If he's level 2, I think it'd be okay. But just so much slow. Every single one of them having a pretty powerful slow. 
20% on Faceless Void, 40 on the Skywrath, and another 28 on the Tree and Protector. So there's just nothing Doomringer can do early on. He's going to be okay at this point, just due to the fact their slows are going to be on cooldown for a little bit. But this is not what you want to have happen if you're on the side of my insanity. Up top, it's going to be a pretty even matchup between Nature's Prophet and and Tidehunter. Tidehunter opting for the early stout shield thinking he was going to be against the tri lane. His items are not the 1v1 style items. If he was going 1v1 he would have likely picked up a bit more actual power instead of just going for the kind of survivability of the stout shield. Lion might be in a bit of trouble as Tree and Protector walks in but does not decide to go for anything. Concussive shot was thrown out but Lion pretty safe. He was playing it very nice and offensive. Enigma could go for a gank. Only level 2 though, so I don't think anything's going to happen. As Invoker stays relatively safe. He's taken a lot of harassment, but he should have his bottle up if he decides to go that path. But it looks like he's not. He's just going to ferry out a salve. And there's boots, so he's going to be fairly safe once he picks up the boots. That just allows him to dodge and actually play a bit more aggressively. Death Prophet really wanted to wait till level 4. The extra man to get, but there's Concussible Shot. And a big amount of damage. Another kill taken on the Death Prophet. As Death Prophet falls, that's two or three for her cleave. And with Invoker picking that up, he's in great shape at this point. Death Prophet's got nothing significant. She's picked up decent farm, but she was going to get decent farm anyway. She just died. So that will delay her bottle. Or no, she actually got the bottle before she died. She just hadn't picked it up yet. She might have been okay if the bottle was there. She just barely got killed. As Invoker's Sunstrike does not do a whole lot of damage this early. <laughs> Doombringer having to level up Scorched Earth over the Devour early on. Which is not what you want to see out of the Doombringer. You generally want to get 2-3 points in the Devour first. Because reducing that, extra, reducing that cooldown is incredibly powerful early on. But the Scorched Earth is all about survivability. So he's not going to be farming particularly well. I don't think he's going to be able to go Midas this game as Midas generally means you're getting a lot of free farm or you have some map control but at this point Cleave has taken all the map control Doom bringing a lot of trouble he's popped the Scorcher so he should be okay but taking a ton of damage and no early time lock but nice use of the Hex keeps Faces Void out Faces Void will fall one for one trade in my insanity's favor Skywrath lives with 10 HP thanks to the living armor but that burned all its living armor charges so he's very low Catapult, nicely done by the Lion. Catapult didn't spot him out, but Lion had to take a guess. Well worth it. And that gets my insanity on the board with two kills. And Cleave, still at four. But definitely not worth it losing the faces for it at this point. And we actually have the Nature's Prophet going down to Tidehunter. As there was a gank up top. Enigma just rotating in. And this puts my insanity back in a pretty good spot. We'll take a look at the graphs in just a moment, because I don't think we're going to see any action in the next moment or two. And it's pretty even. My insanity would be coming out a bit better. Do they got their kills later? Generally, if you pick up your kills later on in the game, you get a lot more experience because the enemy is higher level. Something a lot of people don't think about when they're dealing with kills, as they generally think a kill is a kill. But when you get the kills, is incredibly important in a game like this. And with my insanity able to pick up kills when they're behind, it means they were going to take the experience lead. They're not getting significantly more in terms of experience, outside of the fact Enigma's getting a fair amount from the jungle. But it's mostly the kills coming in a little bit later, and getting an extra level or two on all those kills means a bit of extra experience all around. Looks like Nature's Prophet's going to be in a bit of trouble if he shows himself. Enigma is here. Does have that point of Malthus. Not sure Nature's Prophet's really safe up here. He's had to go power treads just to kind of survive. The fate, generally you want to pick up phase boots for the extra movement speed. And so you don't accidentally get blocked in by things like Treant. And it's going to be Death Prophet with her ultimate up. But no chance he survives this gank. Very easy kill. And this was talking about towards the beginning of the game. Tramp Protector, Skywrath Mage, you have such a large initiation range. The Death Prophet can't really play that aggressive style where you push down the tower quickly. There just tower isn't the ability to back away when you can initiate from almost 2,000 range. It's going to be a lion in a lot of trouble. 
And the question is, will we get a Brock from Time Lock? No, we will not. So it's been a very good job. This should be a nice turnaround, but here comes Treant. Treant doing a good job keeping the Skyrath safe, and no kills are going to be exchanged here. Or will they? Not likely. Looks like we're just going to see both sides backing up. But the Invoker in a lot of trouble, as he does have the haste room. But he's going to run right into Death Prophet, taking a large chunk of his health. As Nature's Prophet's continuing to do pretty well up here. And the Enigma not getting as much as I would have liked. He's level 6, picked up a lot of extra gold and experience from the jungle. But I'm just not feeling his presence in this bottom lane, where they really need to just have him rotate in sometime soon and go for a big kind of combo before the Faceless Void gets level 6. They just profit in a bit of trouble, but nice juke into the forest. No way that Enigma's going to actually go in. They might try and do a little bit to just whittle this tower down, but no way they actually pick it up. And no way they get a whole lot out of this. Outside of just continuing to get the Tidehunter decent farm. And so far the extra farm is working out to pretty is working out pretty nicely for my insanity. Cleave has a slight lead, but the experience heavily in my insanity's favor. Thanks to the Enigma Jumble. And it's gonna be Skywrath rotating up top. And Doom, we should see a pause here. He has disconnected. And smart move by Doom, picking up the ice armor. It's one of the overlooked creeps, especially early on. Its mana cost is fairly high, but there's no way you're getting a kill early game when you have a 30% move slow, 20 attack slow, and 8 armor. You just can't burst through that early game. No one has that much damage unless you just go for pure magic damage, and there's not enough of that at the moment. As Skyrath isn't 6, and Invoker doesn't have a ton of magic damage, especially burst. He has to actually get in there and get those auto attacks off, which are still fairly potent. Tied under in a bit of trouble, and that's going to be a whole lot of damage on him as... Ouch! He just gets melted. No time for the Ravage. And we're going to have Enigma in a bit of trouble, but they decide not to pursue. Concussive Shot was used, and the long cooldown makes it fairly ineffective for constant use early on. Didn't bring in a bit of trouble, but he has the Ice Armor up. And with all these melee coming in, there's the Enigma rotating. He has just enough for Black Hole, but gets silenced just in time. And it's only going to be one loss. Chronosphere is there, but it will he get it off? And he should, unless Doombringer 6. And he is, but out of mana. And wow, he does not get the proc as Lion hits level 6 just in time. No time walk. So that get ultimate does full damage. And this should be another kill on Skywrath, as this has been a fairly high kill game. And that, yeah, nice block. Nice block by the Lion. Just enough to keep him in range. Don't think we're going to see a kill anytime soon. Just to the fact Living Armor is too powerful. But Death Prophet does take a tower. And with that, my insanity in great in a really great position. And this is the power of a team fight lineup. You've got the Enigma for the Black Hole. They didn't even use Doom in that last fight. And if they use that, I honestly think the fight goes better for Cleave if Doom goes off on someone like the Faceless Void. Illusion. And Faceless Boy doesn't have a point in the backtrack, so it, he couldn't have dodged the Lion Ultimate. But he would have gone better if they just throw the Doom on Faceless Void, as he would have likely run, and Cleve would have only given up one kill. That's why a lot of these teams, once you start getting better and better, you learn to save your skills to try and bait people in. When generally in Pugs, or you basically throw everything out as soon as you can and hope for the best. But in games like this, where the skill level's a little bit higher, you can save or even get lucky Radiant just not having the mana for it attack. and bait people in for some extra kills. This is Void, still not level 6. And this is really getting worrisome. He's not level 6 just yet. He'll hit it up to this creep way, but they really need it pretty soon. Skywrath, not level 6 either. And once those two get online, I think we'll see Cleve taking a bit of a mid-game advantage. I just don't see enough for my insanity for the next probably 10 minutes to really deal with it. Black Hole's on a little bit too much of a cooldown. Tidehunter's fairly far away from Blink Dagger. He's not ridiculously far, but he's far enough away that I just don't see him picking it up for another 6 to 7 minutes unless there's several towers taken. Chronosphere online? But still no ultimate for that Skywrath Mage. Treant has come up, but I believe he was seen. And I don't think there's a good way for Cleave to engage. 
safely at this point as everyone's rotated up here other than the two offlaners. Nature's Prophet could come in at any point. He has his teleport available, also has his ultimate up. Tide Hunter coming in. Gonna be in a lot of trouble. He's been silenced up. Kraken Shell does its work, but will not be there in time. Nicely done. And this should be another easy kill. Skyrath hits six off of that. Three for Cleave. And very well done. Nice bait overall. And this looks like they're gonna go for one more. Nature Prophet uses Sprout already. Nice use of the jump in. And there should be another kill on the Enigma. If they actually get it, yeah, they will. Sprout back up. Easy kill. Took him a lot to get in there, but fairly easy as they just jumped in. And Enigma doing good work with his Eidolons, but not enough. And trading four kills for none. Though they might pick up one on the return, but nice silence. And they're going to burn the Ravage for it. Definitely worth it if they can pick up both of these kills. Skyrath fairly quick, but as soon as Gush comes back up, it should be a pretty easy kill, especially with Doom here. And they forced to burn the Doom on it, so not a great return as they pick up two and burn the Doom and burn so many teleports. But I, it's definitely not terrible for my insanity. 20 seconds they can charge this top tower. Death Prophet getting pretty close to that second level of ultimate. Those level two exorcism is infinitely better than the first one. It just there's just so many more spirits, and that makes it much better for pushing. They really need to get her level eleven. And it's pretty early for me to be saying that, but it's one of those heroes that's just so much better at level eleven compared to level six on their ultimate. Dyer's structures are fortified. Gonna see another big team fight, but some of the big team fight ultimates aren't up just yet. Chronosphere still got a few seconds. Skywrath ultimate's available. And now we have Tree Protector with Overgrowth. Doom's still offline. Same thing with Ravage, but this time Black Hole is available. And Exorcism's gonna be down pretty soon. They did do some good damage, but against the Treant. Good damage means absolutely nothing on a tower. Nice use of the Chronosphere. Followed by Meteor. Beautiful ultimate. And that means we're going to see easy kills as when you get an ultimate like that from the Faceless Void, pretty easy to win an engagement. There was just nothing my insanity could do. And that's another kill, four for none. And the top tower didn't even fall for that, so my insanity is in a lot of trouble. They haven't, had the, they haven't had the coordination to really get a good team fight outside of that one bottom where it looked like Cleave just overextended a little bit. And with that, Faceless Void getting very close to that Aghanim Scepter. Not sure Aghanim's is the right choice at the moment. I think he'd value greatly from a Mask of Madness first, then Aghanim Scepter. Unless he's just picking up the Point Booster casually first, which I've seen a few times, and it's not a terrible choice. But he really needs the damage right now. He can get the extra control a bit later. It doesn't add a whole lot for the Aghanim Scepter. The cooldown is nice. Everything else is a little nice, but the extra damage is so much more important at this stage of the game. We'll have to see how it pays off towards the mid-game. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. My insanity really needs that blink dagger on Tidehunter. He's getting close to it. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes off in the jungle and just tries to pick it up that way as I don't think they want to fight too much more on my insanity for at least the next few minutes. They need time for all their ultimates to be back online. Doom has thrown his Doom. It's going to be able to take down the Nature's Prophet down bottom. And it's going to be the top tower in a lot of trouble. One tower denied down bottom. Treant could go in at any point, but I don't think he wants to go into that. Mech almost up on the Enigma. He should have that whenever he goes back to base at this point. Tidehunter is going to be left out. He does get the last hit, so he should have Blink and should be able to actually escape this. Nice use of tree protection. Surprised that spot top isn't checked is or attack. the top spot. Both of those are fairly common to actually sit in and teleport out of. Treant could have burned something to stop the teleport. He has the overgrowth for it. But smoke loss for Cleave. They do pick up the bottom tower, but it was denied and they lost Nature's Prophet. Taking a quick look at our graphs, Cleave up about 2,000 gold, 2,000 experience, nothing that big. 
As more blink daggers come out, Chronosphere pop just on Tidehunter, and Tidehunter, no chance. Just nothing he could do about that. When you throw that many ultimates into the mix, you really don't can't do a whole lot. As there's gonna be a bit of an engagement down bottom. No one of importance lost just yet, but it's gonna be Nature's Prophet in a lot of trouble and he is taken out. But who will be the trade for him? And Lion goes down. One for one in that engagement, and I'd definitely rather have the Nature's Prophet dead than the Lion. So my insanity comes out a bit ahead, other than they lost the Tide Hunter in that mid lane. Chronosphere's still down for 80 seconds, as it was just used, so there won't be any real turnaround. Skyrass out of mana. And really surprised he didn't pick up the Arcane Boots. He's gone Tranquils just to make sure that he can constantly keep his health up. But the big problem with going the Tranquil Boots route is you don't have the mana to constantly be fighting. And his team doesn't have that many Arcane Boots. They have one on the tree, and that's it. So that's not enough to keep the Skywrath going in these long engagements or even multiple engagements as Death Prophet doing what Death Prophets do best just get a nice push going take the one tower all outer towers are now down on the side of Khalif same thing with my insanity as the mid tower and bottom tower are taken out just a few moments ago Nature's Prophet doing a good job split pushing. He's picked up the Maelstrom already, going likely into a BKB just to prevent the team fight ultimates. And Death Prophet trying to get in there with the Yule Scepter, but no luck. Because she was just a little bit late, and the Sprout lasts a little bit too long. Doomringer has gone blink drums. Enigma has the mech finished, along with the Soul Ring. Tidehunter, blink. And that's about it on him. Lion likely saving up for his blink as well. So we're going to have blinks pretty much on everyone on my insanity. And considering Death Prophet's movement speed, she practically has a blink of her own with the phase boots and the Yules. Roshan being taken out fairly effectively. There's not a whole lot my insanity can do at this point. They didn't see it until just now with those conversions. As they didn't have great ward coverage. They had one ward up here, but that doesn't do enough. As the flare come the four spirits. And it's gonna be the faceless void taking a free Roshan. Nice play by Cleve, recognizing that there was no real contest for my insanity. They were playing fairly scared. As you've seen in the last fights, Cleve has done a great job of ambushing. They haven't fought these straight up fights very well, as their team lineup isn't great in just a stand up 5v5. But as an ambush team, Cleve's Re Cleve's team really dominates as they can just get a nice chronosphere, set up their combo, burst one or two down, and fighting 3v5, even with some ultimates down, is pretty easy. Lion has enough for his blink dagger if he wants it, but Invoker's gonna say no as he crushes him, but nice mech usage and beautiful chronosphere on a three. But this is where Faces Void's in a bit of trouble, but they don't decide to doom him, they decide to save the doom for someone else, and it's on the Invoker, bit off the mark. The Skywrath ultimate, and that could end this engagement. Nice Ravage keeps Enigma alive for a little bit longer, and there's the Black Hold just on one, but all they needed. And that's Aegis down. One for one is exchanged as both supports have fallen. We'll see how this actually progresses as Invoker will be able to get the Ghost Walk off. And here's Death Prophet coming in still, and she can just go for the tower at this point. I don't see any reason to continue this engagement. Just push the tower down. The Exorcism Spirits have just ended, so they won't actually get the full push. But they're doing some good damage, and I'd say that's a win for my insanity. You took everything they had, you lost, you traded the Lion for Skywrath. Yeah, that's a win. You took, got the Aegis from Faceless Void as well, Dyer's win. And Faceless Void's still pretty close to that Aghanims, but I don't think that changes any of these engagements. He just doesn't have that much damage once he goes into the Chronosphere. Chronosphere does boost up a bit of your damage, but not significantly enough, as it does get a bit of bonus damage in the Chronosphere. But that's just... It's not that enough for Faceless Void. He needs some source of real damage. And unless he picks up his Mask of Madness as his next item, 
he's going to be very far away from anything significant. They're fully relying on him as a controller, but they put him in more or less a farming role. Nature's Prophet going for a bit more damage, but I haven't felt his effect. He's not really split pushing particularly effectively. He's not bringing any real fear into these engagements. So I definitely have to worry about Khalid's chances going forward, despite them being up slightly. They're running against a team with just such teamfight control that unless things go beautifully well, it's very hard to get anything done. Skywrath Ultimate comes through, but Death Prophet still staying alive. Does get a nice Yule Scepter off as Doom comes in. And there's the Invisibility Rune. Bit of luck on Death Prophet's side having that. But there's just not enough damage. Invoker is shut out. And this is going to be another engagement where Cleve just don't get anything done. On the back line, we're going to see Death Prophet chasing down the Treant Protector. Not sure that's who they want to target. As they do actually finish him off as he walked right into a set of wards as they expire. So when on the side of my insanity, they don't even take down the Death Prophet. And this is the situation where Aghanim Scepter does nothing useful on the Faceless Void. If you don't have something to go with it. And that was a Skyrath's ultimate as well. Was that level 11? No, it was only level one ultimate so no big deal and there's the invoker trying to save it but no real chance as that tower just doesn't have a chance Ninja Prophet's gonna come in there's Lion this should be a very dead Ninja Prophet he doesn't have any way to get out of this he could BKB teleport and he's gonna have to do that pretty soon Yules is there, there's the BKB, there's the teleport, but Doombringer is in, and he gets a nice hit. And this is just where the My Insanity lineup is significantly stronger in these big game fights. Faces, or Enigma took a bunch of damage. Did they use, the, yeah, it looks like they used the Chronosphere to try and kill the Enigma, but they couldn't kill him. There's no damage coming out on the side of Cleave. Outside of the Dangerous Prophet, Invoker doesn't have a ton. He's level 14, he does some decent damage, but... I haven't felt him in these engagements as of late. We felt him as really early on as he did a great job with his sun strikes and keeping the Death Prophet at bay, but no real effect in these last few fights. He's used his full combo on the lion, which you whoop de doo you take out a lion. It, sure, it's nice to take him out early, but he's not a big threat. Especially if he lives long enough to get off one or two spells and with his new blink dagger He should be just fine to get off at least one spell and There's the rod of Atos coming out from the death prophet I like this decision on death prophet it gives a lot of extra mana gives them just a nice setup slow and The big thing here 350 HP. She doesn't have much armor, which I expect her to go back for Shiva's next but You got a lot of health and as we've seen in that last engagement, they have no chance of killing you until Faces Void gets some damage. He doesn't have any real damage except for that double damage run. But that's going to be wearing off in just a moment. And I know I'm harping on Klee for just not having that damage, but this is really their time to shine. They've got a window of about another 10 to 15 minutes where... They're going to be on equal footing to my insanity before the team fight comp really comes into its own. And I don't think outside of just a super farm void that they're going to have much of an opportunity. And he's not going to, and void's not close to his next item. He's going to have mask madness soon, but I'm just not feeling it. Cleave is going to have to start split pushing pretty effectively at this point if they want any chance. Nature's Prophet's going to be their best option. As he does have one finished split push item. But it's still not enough at this point as my insanity is just going to walk down, take every tower they can, and between Eidolons and the Ghosts, and Living Armor does jack diddly squat, and that's another tower. Top tower takes a fair bit of damage, but nothing to write home about. And it's still the split push game by Cleve. They're going to have to defend at some point soon. Or find a way to actually apply damage to these towers, but sitting back waiting for someone to come is not the best answer for them in this game. They're going to have to actively force fights, and it's fairly hard, especially with blink daggers on everyone but the Death Prophet, I believe, at this point. Death Prophet and Enigma. 
There's the Chronosphere, but it's on the Doombringer. Is there enough damage? And with a Sunstrike, there is just enough. Well done. And that's a nice amount of gold to the Skyrath Mage. And he gets his level 2 ultimate. Pretty big. That's an extra three or 400 damage. And 20 seconds off the cooldown. Big problem is the mana cost. But he should be okay for one kind of spell reel. Before actually having to go back to base. Ninja Prophet going back to the split push game. And split push is all he can really do. As he, Even though he does have a BKB. It's not going to be that effective in a fight. That's where Black Hole comes in. And it wouldn't surprise me if Enigma just goes and picks up. I say Blink Dagger over BKB at this point. There's not a whole lot that really stops. Invoker has a few spells. Treant can cancel it even through a BKB. And Skyrath Silence is not likely to be thrown on him alone. They're likely going to be putting it on the Tide Hunter. Or try and stop someone like the Lion. Because as nice as Enigma is, just keeping the Black Hole stop for 6 seconds is not really worth it. You'd rather him cast it than cancel it, or cast it and have it canceled, than st prevent him from actually using it. Because it's almost more of a threat just to have it up than to actually cast it. This is Void going in, showing off his new Mask of Madness. And Doombringer is going to take a lot of damage and is taken out. There's the damage. As Skyrath definitely bringing it now that he picked up a ton more on his ultimate. And Cleave doing a great job of making a comeback. They were falling pretty far behind as they were down almost 3,000 gold just a few moments ago. And they've been they're almost even in terms of experience, but now they've taken 5,000 up. So pretty effective from Cleave showing off the Skyrass levels and the Mask of Madness. Really interested in this pickup as Invoker has picked up a refresher orb this early. 27 minute refresher orb Midas for staff mech is pretty impressive on Invoker. And if he gets his full spell reel off, there's going to be the damage. Between him and Skyrath, that's going to be enough damage to win them an engagement, at least until my insanity picks up some BKBs. And with Doombringer, likely the only one to pick one up anytime soon. I don't see Death Prophet going BKB. Heaven's Halberd seems to be the choice on her. Then likely either Shiva's or Assault Cross. It wouldn't because Doom already has Doom already has Shiva. So Assault Cross on Death Prophet is not a terrible choice. She has pretty good base damage. The minus armor works with her spirits. And the extra armor throughout the entire team would be fairly effective this game. Considering Enigma has 1,400 gold already saved up, he should be picking up the Blink Dagger very soon. And at this point, it's anyone's game, really. It's really going to be about who picks up the next team fight. Because the next team fight means Roche, and assuming it's not close. If it's a close team fight, it I don't think anyone's going to really win it. I think we're going to see a lot of kills. But if one team gets a nice engage, it's going to be Roche and likely the remainder of the Tier 2 Towers. I don't see any team able to push high ground outside of just a big Wombo win by my insanity. And they have the potential to get a big Wombo, though. They've got Tidehunter with his Blink Dagger working his way towards that pipe. And a pipe would be great this game for just preventing that spell damage. And Enigma going with a gem. I... I like to see him pick up the Blink Dagger before Gem, just so he can move around a bit better and not get picked off. But I don't blame them for picking up the Gem. It'll prevent the Treant Protector from getting a good position. It gives them so much more map control for Roshan and the ability to surprise Cleave. And it prevents Cleave from getting nice wards out that could possibly catch them out. They only have wards uh, pretty much nowhere on the side of Cleave. I don't see really any of them at this point. There's only a few by my insanity, and those are right near the rush pit. Invoker checking it out, and that's going to be a pretty easy spot out as the Eidolons are going to go check it out. Nice Hex, and that's going to be a fairly dead faceless Void. He's doomed up, and outside of just the denial, there's nothing to do. Ravage is thrown, but nice four staff usage to keep everyone safe, but with Vaseless Void down. And he does not have buyback, so this is going to be a pretty easy tier 3 tower. Fortification's thrown out there, but Fortification doesn't stop it for long. 
especially with his Death Prophet. Nice use of the Skywrath Ultimate. His cooldown's fairly low, so we can just kind of throw it out. Doom bring in a lot of trouble. His Nature's Prophet's going to be continuing to split push it down bottom. Nice use of Blinks. Invoker in a lot of trouble. No chance to survive. Nice overgrowth by the tree, but where's the follow up? And it's just a little too late. His Nature's Prophet gets there and gets hit by the Shivas, so everything going in favor of my insanity so far in this engagement. Treant does blink away, but what does that really mean? Is he gets chomped on as soon as he gets in there. And he's in the Roche Pit. Will he deny himself? No, he won't. He's actually going to be sneaky and live. Sunstrike does hit the Doombringer. And that means my insanity loses one. And that's a big one because that means Roche time on the side of Cleave. As I don't foresee my insanity one to go in. They've got the black hole, but they need the damage from Doombringer at this point. They don't have the exorcism for a few seconds. Buy back by Doom, but without the tier 2 towers, it's a long way to go. And Roshan falls fairly quickly. Treant's just kind of tanking it up. There come the Eidolons. And they're going to try for an Aegis Denial. Does not happen. And just some free gold as Doombringer had to buy back. And they pick up a full set of Eidolons. Cleave in a commanding position. Not a very safe position as they lost their tier 3 tower. But overall, they're in a decent lead thanks to the fact they're pretty heavily up in experience. That's really going to come into play once you pick up another level or two on Skywrath and the Invoker as every single level on Invoker matters pretty heavily at this point. There's Faceless Void coming up. Does he throw the Chronosphere? Don't think he can at this point. So he gets doomed up. And this should be a pretty easy kill on him. As, ouch! He gets taken down. And there's Aegis. As nice as an item as that Aegis is, they burned Exorcism for it. So I call it a small win on the side of my insanity. They had to burn a lot of ultimates. If they didn't burn Exorcism for that, I think you would have been a huge win for my insanity but you have to get a little more out of this exorcism and it's basically just a farming tool at this point down bottom nature's prophet might be in a bit of trouble if the lion spots him out and lion does see him he had to have at this point and bkb popped but here comes tide and a nice dodge and there's BKB charge burned. Enigma's in a bit of trouble. As Faces Void comes up. Nice. Use of the stun, but no way he lives that engagement. Just way too much damage from the Skywrath Mage. And here comes Nature's Prophet again. As Lion's Dukes and is actually pretty safe. Same with Doombringer. Just losing the Enigma for all that. Not a terrible thing. He's going to be back pretty soon. And there's no real objectives on the map for Kaleev to take. They could go for the Tier 2 Tower, but the wave's well pushed in my insanity's favor. Nature's Prophet gets hit by the Death Prophet. And he's in a lot of trouble. He doesn't have BKB up. And they don't decide to go on it. No Chronosphere. So well played by both sides. Nature's Prophet got very lucky. He's not been looking at his keyboard as much as... He's been looking too much at his keyboard or chat instead of actually looking at his character. Because he's been caught out twice where he possibly could have died with no real ramifications for it. It looks like he's not fully focused at some points when he's waiting to split push. Doom has an invisibility rune. Doom is available. He's going to go right for the faceless void. Will he jump out? Yeah, he does. No way. He's going to stay there. Doombringer blinks forward. Pops Chivas. Nice use of Chronosphere. It ensures safety. Death Prophet's pretty much blocked off as well, but no Chronosphere. And Treant's in a lot of trouble. He does not have the Nature's Guys for a few seconds, and he will eventually pop it, but no way he, he gets out of that. Nice Death Prophet to finish them off. And at this point... It's going to be a pretty hard to defend this Rax. I would almost give it up on the side of Cleave. They don't have Chronosphere. They don't have anything else of real note. And it's a free Rax. They just couldn't defend it against the Spirits. It's a smart move not to defend it. And down bottom, Nature's Prophet does 
next to nothing as Lion comes in. He did his he did his job pretty effectively. And that's one thing why I like that's one thing I love about Lion is he's just great at stopping pushes. Especially if there's a hero involved. Earth Spike, Hex, and then just nuke him finger of death. Chronosphere popped on just the Enigma. And this should be a kill on him, but no big deal. You lost Enigma, took a set of racks. Yes, please. Because there's no real way that trading one for a Rax is in any way bad. Especially in a game like this where there's no real threat of split push. Nature's Prophet does not have a split push build going at this point. He's gone for team fight. He's got Monier. He's got the crit going. But that doesn't kill towers. That doesn't split push. That's not a Desolator. That's not Necro Minions. Those are the kinds of things you get to split push. This is a team fighting Nature's Prophet. And we have not felt his team fight ability this game. Faceless Void about to pick up his BKB. Should help him out a great deal in these next engagements. So we can actually go in and fight. Well, Pipe is up on Tidehunter. And this is scary because that's a lot of their magical damage. Just not going to be there in these next few engagements. Especially if Skywrath has to split his ultimate between multiple opponents. Is it split evenly between any heroes in the area? So it could easily be negated with a pipe if it hits more than one person. And Death Prophet's only getting bigger. She's going to have her heart up in just a few moments. Lion coming in. Nice hex. Tree and protector. No chance. But nice tornado actually keeps him up for a moment. And with four staff, four staff blink, he's actually able to stay alive. No finger of death used. Really surprised at level two, you don't just throw it out. But I guess they really want him to get the level three first. 100 seconds is a long time without it, but definitely worth it for a kill on the Trim Protector at this point. As you could walk forward and fairly effectively chunk down this tier three tower without the Trim Protector being there for a good 30 to 40 seconds. And they might actually kill it if true if they would have actually killed the Trim Protector. I'm sure, you don't have Finger of Death, but at this point, Finger of at this point, they think they value Finger of Death more than they value a kill on the Trim Protector. I don't agree with it, but I don't think it's a terrible decision. And in this case, it's going to pay off. As the threat of him using the ultimate keeps everyone at bay. Trim Protector should be able to pick up this kill on the Tidehunter. As I don't see any way for Tidehunter to get out of this. There's just too much damage going to come in on top of him. And not worth on the side of my insanity. They did a bit of damage to the bottom tower, but whoop do you do on that? You did a bit of damage to the bottom tower. That means pretty much nothing. They do spot the Doombringer out. And with Nature's Guys, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Skyrath Ultimate's thrown, and he's taken out quickly. That ultimate does a ridiculous amount of damage. One thing I'm really surprised we haven't seen on the side of Cleave is... A Veil. Veil of Discord would be an excellent item for their team just to amplify all that magic damage they deal. Invo between Invoker and Faceless Void and the Skyrath Mage all doing heavy magic damage, they could easily amplify their damage significantly with just that one item. And that would definitely give them an edge in these team fights. It's just a question of is it worth it? And so far, not really. In their minds. At this point, Nish Prophet in a lot of trouble. He's going to go down. No way to get out of that. And without. Well, no, Chronosphere's back up. Figured it had a few seconds left, but they don't have enough man on Skyrath to continue. And this is where not having an Arcane Boots or the Yule Scepter, which we see a lot of Skyrath Mages go, you don't have the mana to fight more than one or two engagements before having to go back to base. It's the big reason why Skyrath Mage never saw play for a long time. Is he just had mana problems out the wazoo. But he's picked up a lot of popularity lately due to just needing to fight in the mid game. And he's probably one of the best fighting supports in the game for probably throughout most of the mid game. He is just incredibly powerful at nuking down one high priority target and stopping a big team fight controller. Like an Enigma, like a Tide Hunter. And that's why he's just seen such a rise in popularity. Because they need someone to stop the big team fighter. 
and he does that job pretty effectively. Hark now completed on the Death Prophet, still lacking a bit of armor, which has to be your next item. As if she picks up some armor, I don't see anything being able to kill her. Between all the different crowd control she has, Ultimate is popping. They're just going to run up and whack at the tower. It hasn't been healed too effectively. And with minions pushing the mid lane, there's no backdoor protection. This is Void. Pops his BKB, but is it enough? They will be able to get very close on Death Prophet, but thanks to the pipe, no kill or Eno. And that's going to be tight under actually going down to the Nature's Prophet doing a fair bit. BK Black Hole is popped, and it's a one kill for it. Tide Hunter is down, but not sure it's worth so far. Skyrath has had to buy back, but is that going to be enough? Death Prophet has come back to engagement, but without spirits, it's not that great. Doombringer still doing a good bit of damage. His Invoker taking a lot as well, living with 20 HP, and it's going to be a nice stun by the Lion. And that takes Faceless Void down. Skyrath still alive, but not in any fighting condition. Sunstrike kills the lion off. And with that, fight should be almost over as the invoker comes back. And throughout all of that, we'll have to look at the charts at the end to see who actually won. But I have to favor my insanity due to not needing buybacks and actually getting a tier 3 tower. They lost their tier 3 up top, but no big deal as Nature's Prophet just doesn't have the ability to split push particularly effectively. We saw him, he saw his team fight presence then that last engagement. It was a pretty quality performance from him. Sunstrike, nope. And we'll take a look. It slightly favored my insanity. And considering they already have the mid-racks down, I'm still favoring my insanity. Yeah, there we go. There's a full update. Huge change in gold and experience still pretty heavily experienced in favor of Cleave, but gold is now tipped in the favor of my insanity. Not a lot, but every little bit counts. And they're going to be able to just rush in their next engagement and do the exact same thing. And this time, there's going to be an Aegis up on what looks to be the Aegis Prophet. I think they want to give it to... Okay, they're going to give it to Void. Cheese on the Aegis Prophet. This gives Cleave a big chance to win the next engagement and it wouldn't surprise me if my insanity just wait out the ages at this point they're getting a lot more farm off the map as there's not a great way to farm on the side of cleave they've got the phases void who can farm decently well but he doesn't have battle fear he doesn't have midas i'm not too worried about him if i were on my insanity he's getting close to his next item but he's still a long ways off of anything significant there's Skyrath who, who does not have buyback as he burned it in the last engagement. And there's the dust popped. Cleaver going to have to try and take an engagement down bottom. But I'm not sure it's going to be enough. My insanity are just going to walk forward. and I wouldn't surprise you if they just ignore the combat and go for two lanes of racks. Smoke is here. Nature's Prophet. Nowhere to be found. Nice use of Chronosphere. But beautiful Tidehunter Ravage ends the combo. Bunch of damage taken by the Death Prophet, but no dead Death Prophet. I mean, she's going to be doing just fine. Pops the ultimate, and there's just no damage coming out on Cleave. They're going to eventually get the Doombringer, or maybe not. So he just turns around and gets a beautiful hit on the Faceless Void. And this is the power of a team fight lineup. They just crushed through that engagement because they didn't get their combo off. Tidons are too powerful. And Faceless Void going to go down again if he doesn't get a nice time walk off. And he doesn't. Doombringer eventually falls, but that's not enough at this point. Invoker's already had to buy back. Pops the Ghost Walk, but not in time before he's out of mana and out of health. Because he's very low and won't be able to engage too much longer. Surprise, he's actually gone back in with that little health. Three down so far. As Nature's Prophet does a good job of continuing to stay in this fight. And I... That's a small win on side of Cleave if they can get the Death Prophet. As here comes in, the Boots of Travel teleport by the Invoker. So they're going to pick the Death Prophet up. Um, I'd say my insanity won that, but not by enough. Dyer's bottom barracks are under this is starting to get worrisome. 
as they had a great fight there, but buybacks were just a little too strong. Invoker had to buy back. Nature's Prophet bought back. And Nature's Prophet going for a Rax. He's not going to be able to pick one up. His Death Prophet bought back, and he's going to have to get the heck out of there. But nice Yule Scepter as his teleports last too long, and this Death Prophet going to be down for a long time. 90 seconds. And he was he did not respect the Yule Scepter. Lion not going to be hit by the Sun Strike. It was a nice attempt, but he was guessing at best in that engagement. And this is very worrisome for Cleave. 75 seconds without the Nature's Prophet. Death Prophet has her ultimate up, and they don't have a good way to kill her. And as soon as she picks up some armor, she'll be in great shape to just survive these engagements. She's done well already with that amount of health. But reducing the damage... Dealt by Faceless Void, by the Nature's Prophet, she'll be in even better shape. Surprise, Nature's Prophet didn't pop the cheese in that last engagement. He still has it on him. And that could have easily turned it around and forced him not to buy to use a buyback. Two going to be up top, but the links are there, and Death Prophet does get out. Very close. She could have been Chronosphered, but it was, it was close. He had probably about half a second where it was possible and just not fast enough but I like this decision by my insanity they're just gonna go down bottom take the racks I think their mission is pretty clear as we saw in the last fight don't get team don't get take a bad team fight take racks they're both at full health, and it wouldn't surprise me if they just go for the range racks. Pick up whatever you can. Death Prophet going to run Dyer's forward with all the minions. Or all the creeps, excuse me, in the mid lane, just pounding on those towers. They can just go right for it, and they're going to go right at the range racks. Doom is popped, and wow, Faces Void died fast. He's not going to be back in this engagement. And there's a nice black hole. First really good black hole we've seen all game. Doesn't do a whole lot, but... It did exactly what it needed to do. Lion's going to live with a few health. And that's two dead on side of Cleave. No chance for, to come back. And there's Skywrath going down as well. This should be game for my insanity. They don't have the lead in terms of kills. But they constantly took objectives. And it was just really hard to fight into a lineup with that much teamfight power. Well played by my insanity. Cleef played fairly well, but they just never got enough done. They had several windows to make things happen, but just not enough done, and they never really found their stride. They had a lot going. They had a lot of they had a lot everywhere, but no single focus like my insanity had. Where my insanity had team fight. Team fight, kill structures. Cleef had a little bit of split push, a little bit of team fight, a little bit of burst, a little bit of sustained damage, but I never felt that focus that we, I like to see out of teams like my insanity had this game and that ultimately cost Cleve the game. Welcome everyone to the keys of the game where we watch some of the highlights and big turning points in the game we just watched. The first key to the game comes in right as Cleve are going to be setting up for our first blood attempt. They do a great job of getting up to this hill without being seen. Duringer might have seen Skyrath but he thinks he's just warding a little bit in the jungle. Lion has no shot at staying alive from this due to the very nice chain slows. He gets a nice impale, but to no big effect. And first blood is taken by the Skyrath Mage. Even bigger than this, though, is Cleve's tri lane. Cleve is able to get an amazing tri lane set up that basically negates Doombringer throughout the early portion of the game and keeps Lion under farmed for the first few minutes. They're able to pick up several more kills from this situation and it just becomes an excellent overall position for Cleve going into the mid game. The next key to the game comes in as Faceless Void is stopped from teleporting up to join into a top engagement. He immediately jumps away and tries to re-engage. He has no shot at killing Doomringer with the ice armor on him, but he continues to fight anyways, and a beautiful impale is landed by the lion to ensure the kill on the tree and protect her. Enigma's rotated in, and they try to go for Enigma. He's fairly low health, but it's a beautiful one-man black hole. There's nothing Skyrath can do about it. He's out of mana, 
and Lion just bursts him to bits. And with that, Skyrath Mage is going to fall as well. Doombringer too fast as Skyrath Mage just continues to run around. And while all this is happening, Invoker is taken very low in the mid lane. And just can't really get anything done. Mid tower is taken out by Death Prophet. And that's just a huge swing of momentum for the game. Two kills in the bottom lane. And they get the middle tower for basically free. And this is really what keeps my insanity in the game, is one or two big mistakes like this. The next key to the game comes in as my insanity is pushing down this top tower. Titan is going to walk into the jungle and eventually be caught out due to the fact that there's a beautiful ward placed by Cleave that sees everything going on. Titan does try to go on the invoker for a bit of damage, but Skyrath there does way too much. And they're able to quickly take him down. Beautiful Chronosphere hits four. And they're able to quickly take out the Death Prophet as well as the Lion, making it three for zero. Nature's Prophet goes for another kill on the Enigma. And they are eventually able to hunt him down, with making this a four for zero, costing several big ultimates, such as the Death Prophet ultimate, for absolutely nothing. And this is what really gets Cleave going in the mid game. This happens again in just a few moments in basically the exact same fashion. And this is what really gives Cleave such a strong mid game presence. The next key to the game comes in as we see Cleave going for a smoke gank. They get a nice Chronosphere on two, but an even better Ravage hitting five in that engagement. And it basically turns this fight around. Invoker gets taken out very low. But still, no deaths at this point. Doombringer's popped his BKB, and they're able to take out the Nature's Prophet before he gets a whole lot done. Basis Void's in really bad shape as well. Lion just does a beautiful impale as he does pretty much every engagement. And with that, Invoker's had to buy back. Aegis is burned. And this is where my insanity just overextend a little bit too much. They get the Faceless Void. But it's such a high cost as we've got the buyback on Nature's Prophet doing some good damage. Invoker soaks a lot as well. And they never really go for the racks at this point. They go for the kills and it really hurts them. It was a great fight and they win it overall considering all the buybacks. But they just don't go for racks. They learn their, they're going to get their butts whooped when they continue to fight thanks to all the buybacks. As eventually Death Prophet will fall. It takes a while, she just has so much health. But it turns out to be what was a great fight into an average fight for my insanity. Rax still at full health, more or less. And this just really shows why diving is really poor after a great engagement by my insanity. Thank you for watching this game cast by Pander. If you wish to see more, please check out my YouTube and Twitch links below. Thank you again for watching.